Hi everyone, it's Clyde from Vibrant Soap, and today I have two soap cuttings for you, but I only have a partial making of one and a full making of the other, and that's because when I downloaded to my um, video program to edit the videos, um, something happened to the information on the disc, so anyway, um, I'll show you what I have got from that. And that was my rainbow pour. What it was, it was a drop swirl, and I, I dropped six different colors in different sections of the loaf, and you'll kind of see what I did when you see the reveal of that one. So anyway, I'm going to show you what I ended up with. Um, I made a coffee soap for my second one, and that's a really simple one, and it's a, using my small mold that I haven't used in a long time, uh, just because I really wanted to use a little bit of fragrance that I did have, and it smells awesome, it smells like coffee. So let's get started with the making of half of the uh, rainbow soap. orange and finally the yellow okay so almost done get the white on top of that and I really want to take a picture so I know you'll be upset but I'm gonna put the white on top of that still in there. And I just want to carefully, I think I'll use a spoon for this, just want to carefully get that white spread out a little bit more. It's okay if I get like little pastel swirls in there. I'm gonna add some lines of micro drizzle before I swirl. Just get this in little ribbons like I did down below, and then I'll swirl it. There's the yellow. I just took some mica and used a little avocado oil to make the drizzle, and it will get absorb back into the soap, makes a nice texture. I looked for purple that was more on the red side than the blue side. Finally the green. Okay. Not too big a mess considering considering the messes I usually make. All right, so what am I gonna use as a strolling tool? I'm gonna use a chopstick and I'm going to do diagonal lines. And that's it. It's very busy. If I did another diagonal swirl against that, it would just be really busy. So I think that's going to be plenty good. Give you a good look at that. And then we'll come back for the cut. Okay, soap at 73 degrees today. There's my oils. 
The only difference in today's soap is that I'm making a small batch. I'm using a mold that I haven't used in a long time because I just want a little bit of this soap. This smells awesome. It's an espresso soap. It's my typical oils and clay. And no milk in this one. I don't want it to heat up. There's my lye solution. And I'm going to crinkle cut this one. It's going to be a rather plainer soap. Before I use my fragrance, that's going to make things very brown, I'm going to pour some off. That will not get any fragrance. Just to get some kind of differentiation in the swirls. And you do have to portion your fragrance oil, make it a little less when you portion out parts of your soap that has no fragrance. And this one is going to get some of that titanium dioxide. This one's going to be darker. I'll blend that a little more. Of course that white is not going to be white everything is said and done because it'll turn brown but it'll turn a lighter brown. Okay so let's see how we're gonna do this. Here's a smaller mold that I used to use all the time. And I think what I'm gonna do to get a nice swirly effect is to just do an in the pot swirl and I am going to stir this a little first stir this you can see how yellow the batter is already with this fragrance it smells really good because of the vanillin content Stirring out the bubbles. Let's add the white. that in the mold. Kind of full. Use that for the extra. So I did downsize this recipe but okay so let's 
still have some more white that I want to put on top of this one. Just want to make, simulate uh, coffee swirls. This one's going to be for me, so it doesn't need to be very fancy. It's the icicle white. So I want a top part of this, like it's coffee froth on top of the soap. Make it look like coffee by using this white. But what I know is that fragrances that are high in vanillin will turn brown. And if there's any soap next to it that's really white, eventually that brown discoloration will seep into that also. And it gives it kind of like a dirty look to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a mica line between that and the top so that it can kind of buffer that migration of discoloration. So this is a gold mica and it's got a really fine mesh so that hopefully the mica doesn't just pour out on top. It's a gold mica. And you have to make sure that you don't add too much mica because you can separate the layers so much that when you cut it, the soap separates. I want this a little thicker. This is, I have an idea. Okay, this is thicker, so what I'm going to do is just add this to this. Just pour a little bit of this on top, and then I'm going to make some peaks. I think I'll let that set up a little bit first. I'm going to do some cleanup and I'll be right back with you. Okay, let's see if this is ready. It's still a little wet. I'm going to wait a little longer. Alright, so I poured a little bit more of that white on top and let's give this a shot. Still, the white is a little liquidy, but it might add to the effect if I can do this swirl, this texturizing, and then come back and do it a little bit more. So it'll mix the two layers a little bit, as coffee tends to do. It's fun to play sometimes. A little more cold mic on top. And then just wait for the cut. There you go. So stick around. I'm going to do two cuts because the rainbow soap that I made with the lime and raspberry fragrance, I had some kind of 
data breach or something on my camera. That's never happened before. So the making of disappeared. So this part will be the making of. And we'll have two soaps to cut for you today. Okay, so let's at least show you the cutting of this soap. I don't know why my camera acted up. I'm gonna, this first cut will tell me whether I'll have to cut it on its side, because I don't want to drag down all that mica. I think it's going to be okay. So the way that I poured this was um, I had the white base and I started on this side and just did drop swirls and I tried to pour the yellow here, then the orange, then the red, then the purple, and then blue and green. So let's see how that turned out in the rest of the loaf. So far there's no glycerin rivers, which is good. That circle there. And this is scented with um, black raspberry vanilla and a little bit of lime since I was almost out of the black raspberry vanilla. It's mostly black raspberry and vanilla. Not only do I like the colors, but I like the little bits of white trails in that too. It's also interesting to see the, the difference in the mica colors when they're combined with the soap. They become a little bit more matte as opposed to the drizzles up on top. Of course, the glitter doesn't hurt either. Pretty consistent in the way it's swirled. Thank you very much for watching and subscribing to this channel. So I tried to do I try to do different things, not only to get a variety of soap so that they don't all look the same, but to keep things interesting. A lot of the first part of the videos is similar because the soap base is pretty much the same. But there's all these old techniques of swirls that I like to revisit to get things to look different and to just keep my interest going. If I did the same thing all the time, that wouldn't be much fun. There's so many ways to combine colors alone, but we also have a variety of different swirl techniques, pouring techniques. If you've enjoyed this and watching my little journey with soap and trying different things. I hope that you would subscribe or just say hello in a comment. It's getting a little more difficult to respond to all the comments that come in, but I do my best. And I figure that if you put your time into giving me a comment, I'm gonna respond back. So this is my last cut right here. And for those of you that are afraid of subscribing, uh, I've been subscribed to a lot of channels. The only thing that happens is you get a notification that says um, there's a new video that was uploaded by those people. So you don't miss out on your favorite
YouTubers. This is a thin cut, so I can make samples out of that. And you'll see my logo come up at the very end of the screen, that little colorful hummingbird. And uh, you just tap that and you are subscribed. So on your email, you'll get a little notice that says uh, a new video is available. Okay, so first I'm going to get these out of the mold. I started making soap with this mold and I wanted to make a smaller batch today. So it's sort of nostalgic. And this soap is going to turn very dark. This is a result of just the fragrance oil, this caramel color. And it's not going to stay this color, it's going to turn uh, deep brown. So the next thing I do is just take care of. It's easier to do that with uh, one big sweep like this rather than to do it to every individual bar afterwards. So I'm going to crinkle cut this which means I get to show you how I cut by hand. The first thing is you notice my table is really low. <clears throat> so my secret is first measure where I'm going to cut. So I want these, these are really squat bars, so I think I'm going to, if I cut them any wider than one inch, they're going to be not so ergonomic. So I'm going to keep it at one inch and then um, just sell, that, sell this at a reduced price. So I'm looking straight down at my soap. And I'll put little notches where I want to cut. Then one of the good things to know about cutting by hand is to get right above your soap so that you can see how straight down you your angle is. With a crinkle cutter it's a little more tricky. Look and that white will become more pronounced as the soap darkens. So in an upcoming soap video, I'll be showing you these when they have darkened completely. Usually when you have a crinkle cut like that, the soap really can bubble up much more quickly because it's more surface area. Some of the top will remain bright white because it has no fragrance in it. I like wire cutters, but I really like the feeling of cutting by hand. So these end pieces um, are going to have one smooth side. I'm okay with that. So that's it for this one. I just wish my making of the rainbow soap had worked out, but that happens sometimes. And we'll see you for the next video. Thanks for subscribing and thanks for all the nice comments as well. 
And remember, I have an Instagram page where I post a lot of things that inspire me. Lots of flowers, a lot of bright colors, and my latest crazy habit of making sourdough bread. So we'll see you next time. Okay, take care, everybody. Bye. Um, but gosh, um, but um, not crying over uh, I'm not crying over something. Um, but I'm not gonna cry over. So, so I I want to tell you what happened though. So I'm gonna take the footage that I do have and offer that to you, and just tell you that um, better luck next time. And I will hopefully.